Hello, my name is Mordred Viking and I'd like to welcome you to this tutorial video which is brought to you by the kind generosity of my Patreons. If you would like to contribute to these types of tutorials in the future then please do check out my Patreon page which you can find linked in the description. Right, so basically what we are going to be talking about today is a topic very dear to my heart and I know that we've had several discussions about this with my community and on Discord and that is Hearts of Iron for doctrines. This is definitely something of a divisive topic. Everyone has their own favourite examples and they all think that they work in different ways. Now I have a fair amount of experience playing Hearts of Iron. I have played with every single one of these doctrines numerous times and they are definitely powerful in different situational areas but some nations are more naturally drawn to some than others and you can do some pretty interesting tactics with them as well. Now a couple of them are pretty obvious like Germany tends to do pretty well with mobile warfare. Russia tends to do pretty well with mass assault but these nations can of course um, mix these up a little bit and so what I wanted to do today is basically just talk about each of the doctrines, their strengths and weaknesses and then something of a comparison between them because there are a couple of stats which I think you will find quite interesting. Let's start out on the left hand side so we'll start with modern warfare. Modern warfare as a general tree is very focused on movement, on tanks, on very high organizations. They can actually function with pretty small but elite armies and on planning speed which makes them very very reactionary rather than sitting in a stationary line and then surging outwards. Instead they are about very tactical micro heavy offensives which utilize their extremely powerful tanks to punch a hole through the enemy territory and then encircle them so their combat is all about encirclement if they cannot pull off these encirclements then they are actually a very weak um, doctrine to play as indeed so if you kind of prefer a more hands-off top level approach mobile warfare is probably not going to go particularly well with you and you might want to check out one of the other ones so let's talk a little bit about precisely why this is well most of it is pretty obvious from their very first choice in that the tanks and armor variants get a massive amount of breakthrough and that is actually going to compound all the way up to 60% increase in breakthrough if you chase the right trees and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, they also have very good planning speed and very good division speed and also organization while moving. But um, the planning speed is important because you can get planning preparation which basically acts as a solid bonus to attacks. So if you are preparing an offensive you will get a 50% preparation planning bonus sorry um, if you spend the full amount of time to do that and the mobile warfare doctrine reduces the time it takes to get this planning preparation to full uh, by 50% and that will actually increase up to 70% if you make the right choices here so they can get that planning bonus very very quickly blitz through it but the amount of planning preparation they can get is relatively small compared to some of the others. So they will be a very stop, start, stop, start, stop, start kind of nation um, to play as. Uh, the delay gives them organization, and this is kind of a recurring theme. Mobile Warfare has by far the highest amounts of organization of any of the armies, so they are definitely working best in smaller combat width forces. So usually when you're playing you want your combat width to be either 10, 20, 40 or 80 if you're feeling particularly brave. Uh, so the Germans would probably, or oh sorry, <laughs> the mobile warfare doctrine would probably fare the best in lots of small units of 20 rather than going to the bigger 40 or even bigger 80. Um, usually you won't go to 80, it would be 20 or 40, that's generally the combat size that we're talking about here. Um, and the reason for that is because they have such high innate organization and you want them constantly jumping in, reinforcing, and then basically being very reactionary. You can see where gaps are appearing. You can see where the enemy might be weak. You might see where your own lines are weak and you'll be able to respond in force. The other thing I want to highlight here is that their organization for motorized and mechanized actually gets higher than that of infantry. And that is important because you can produce an army of motorized, particularly if you're playing a highly industrialized nation like Germany, and basically entirely replace your infantry divisions with motorized. And there are a couple of reasons you might want to do this. One of the downsides is it's slightly more uh, industrially intensive, although honestly motorized is not that expensive as a thing to produce. So if we actually have a very, very quick look at how much motorized costs, each piece is 2.5 to build. That's basically... One f uh, five times more than a gun. You can produce a lot of guns. So honestly, the 
amount of production required for motorized is not huge. One reason that you might want to do this is because motorized start with an innate hardness of 10%. This means that they will take only 90% of the damage from soft attack opponents, and most of the damage done in Hearts of Iron, particularly by the AI, is going to be soft attack. Furthermore, if you get the research for mechanized in 1940, that actually doubles the amount of motorized infantry hardness, and that's basically for free. All you need is this technology. You don't need to build mechanized for this at all. So you can get a pretty cheap, extremely elite, and I'm talking plus 60 organization over the baseline, over any technologies and etc. That's 60 just from the doctrines, which is absolutely enormous. Um, for your motorized division. So the motorized can get up to 60, infantry can get up to 45, and then tanks can get to 12. 12 doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually more than double what any of the others get. So the amount of organization you can get in your tank divisions is pretty darn good. But you will want tank divisions with motorized slash mechanized in um, reserve, and you will have these extremely potent, durable units to punch through, and the units can afford to be much smaller than some of the other doctrines will require. Now that we've talked a little bit about the overview of the mobile warfare, let's just go and look through the actual line. So we started doing with the delay, we can go down to Elastic Defense, which gives you slightly more tank organization, uh, max speed. Uh, this is the only tree which I think grants max speed, so your divisions will be very strong. And this is very conducive to the punching through, getting cutoffs. Like, mobile warfare is all about these cutoffs, as I mentioned before. Now, the first choice you have to make is between mobile infantry and blitzkrieg. Mobile infantry is the choice to make if you want to be a little bit more defensive and you're a little bit more worried about being pushed back in certain areas. And the reason for this is because it is a huge boost to the quality of your motorized and your mechanized. So this is more about the kind of support element of your army rather than the dashing forth for glory tanks. Um, so you can see here that you get recovery rate and movement speed for the mechanized and motorized. Uh, organization for infantry and motorized and mechanized goes up even further. And then just to top that off even more, this is where you get the plus 15 for motorized mechanized. And your tanks are also pretty decent with a plus 3 there. On the Blitzkrieg side, however, this is more about punching your way through an opponent's defensive shield with the tank breakthrough. Immediately going in with the tank breakthrough and organization here. I'm not talking too much about the tactics because, honestly, I have not paid that much attention to them. That's just something I kind of leave going automatically in the background. I'm sure it makes a difference. Like some of these trees get tactics much earlier than some of the others, but this is more about the raw stats and also just my experience with fielding these uh, nation, uh, these doctrines. I keep saying nations. Doctrines. Okay, so the next one in Blitzkrieg is the Schwerpunkt, which gives you even more tank organization and also tank recovery rates. That is important because you will need to park up your tanks every now and then let them recover their organization before attacking again. When you are moving, you recover organization much more slowly than when you are stationary. So the constantly shifting mobile warfare needs this extra recovery rate to offset that in much the same way as the motorized and mechanized would get it from this tree. And then this one here, finally, oh, no, that's the one I was talking about. Oh no, that's even more recovery rate for the tanks and armor, uh, and then some organization, though nowhere near as much as this side for the mechanized and motorized. So ultimately, you can get the highest uh, recovery rate for tanks on this side and for motorized and mechanized on this side, and that is the highest by far of any of the other factions. The, the next one would be a 0.1 bonus rather than a 0.4 bonus, which uh, with the mass, of, mass assault over mobile warfare. So mobile warfare get very, very good uh, recovery, but mass assault have a couple of tricks up their own sleeve. Okay, then we have got the comfort gripper here, which is another kind of linchpin. It gives you a lot more recovery rate for your infantry and motorized, uh, more organization for those guys, and then more planning speed, and that gets your 50% up to the 70%, meaning that you can prepare offensives extremely quickly. So the amount of time uh, spent between a, a push and a quick halt for a breather is minimized. And then you have a choice to make. Desperate defense versus modern Blitzkrieg. If the war isn't going very well, or if you're finding that you're having manpower issues, then desperate defense is obviously the way you will go. This is one of the two branches, sorry, one of the two folk, one of the two <laughs> doctrines which can get extra manpower and they can get another 5% manpower from the desperate defense from 2% here, 3% here, and then a little more uh, guerrilla tactics and effective our panzans. That one seems a bit rubbish. And then you have the modern Blitzkrieg, which is basically taking everything they already do well 
and then making it even better. So you get even more organization for your infantry, motorized, mechanized, and tanks. You get the backhand blow, which is another tactic. And then finally, you get the 20% cap off and the recovery rate for tanks and armor variants. So if you go to this side and this side, the amount of breakthrough you will have is phenomenal. The amount of recovery you will have is phenomenal. Your tanks will hit like an absolute sledgehammer. But you have to keep them supported and you have to be aware that you are not very good on the defensive. If someone is attacking against you, you will potentially struggle and like i said this is very micro intensive so you want to be in close to the action you want to be um moving your troops around yourself you can't really rely on the ai to do that for you which yeah, for some things in hearts of iron is a good thing for some things especially when you're fighting on a lot of different fronts and there's a lot going on at the same time and you're playing on a fairly high uh game speed because it's multiplayer then you might struggle a bit but if it's single player and you have the time to pause and that type of thing mobile warfare might be pretty decent all right, next up, we will talk about superior firepower. Now, this is definitely a controversial one on this channel because people know that this is the one that I like the least. I must admit, looking over this in more detail, there is more about this doctrine to like than I had initially thought. Again, this is going to be kind of particular depending on which country you are actually playing, whether you can make the most um, use out of this. But there are a couple of interesting things going on here which are certainly bear interest so the first thing to consider is superior firepower as the name might suggest is all about dealing damage it is all about wrecking your opponent this is a pretty good one for sustained offensives it's pretty good for uh, destroying equipment and manpower of your opponents it also has the highest hard attack rate so if you are up against very strong mechanized forces uh, germany then superior firepower might well be a decent choice for that because your anti-tank units and even just your regular units that have some hard attack will be far more effective against those hard units than might otherwise be the case so bearing in mind that damage done to the opponent kills both manpower and also equipment so you're, if you're up against someone with a not great industry or middling industry then this is a way of really causing some problems for them so this could be for example a germany wanting to face off against russia first rather than against france against russia you're going to struggle a bit more the terrain's a bit rougher the country is just simply bigger so getting these cutoffs will be a little bit more difficult especially against a very very breakthrough resistant mass assault doctrine which russia is quite likely to use so if you wanted to really hurt russia then superior firepower might actually be a better choice in that instance than mobile warfare all right so let's talk about the actual tree itself so you start off with a soft attack this is just a blanket for all frontline battalions which i basically think means everything which is combat all units except support so everything in your army land army does 20 percent more soft attack damage that's just going to wreck their in industry and it's going to wreck their um, manpower as I said. Next up you have got a little bit of an organization boost. Now superior firepower do struggle somewhat in the amount of organization they get although their infantry is actually pretty decent. They get 25 maximum infantry organization if you're like completely optimal this is what I'm talking uh, then you'll be able to get that. Uh, however their tank organization is five which is actually second highest and their infantry sorry motorized and mechanized is 10 which is the lowest. So Motorized mechanized, they're not great for just kind of having a front line to hold hold the area and to support your artillery. It's pretty decent. However, I should caution you, you will most likely be very reliant on artillery. Artillery as a standard unit has a very low amount of organization. So you might actually struggle a bit to hold these lines because your units will be quite fragile compared to the opponent. So you'll need to have quite a few units in reserve um, and you will need to basically hope that you're out damaging your opponent rather than them damaging you. you you should be you are a damage but you are a glass cannon so hit and run tactics might well be something you might want to utilize with superior firepower okay next up we have got the defense so to offset some of that fragility you have the highest just base defense for infantry and motorized i thought that grand battle plan actually had this but i was wrong the highest defense is actually for the superior firepower and this kind of goes in with the uh, more hit and run because the grand battle plan are very good in entrenchment while these guys just have the straight defense which reduces the amount of damage they take in general all right so next up you have the first choice which is between dispersed support and integrated support now this is where a couple of the game mechanics kind of work themselves out and you're like eh, what does this actually mean so for first glance integrated support looks great plus 25 percent soft attack plus 10 percent or uh, plus 10 organization 
All right, that's cool. Oh, wait, that's doubled. Support companies also a further 25% soft attack and a further plus 10 organization. That means a plus 10, no, uh, sorry, plus 20 organization for the support companies and a plus 50% attack. That sounds amazing, but hold your horses. Bearing in mind that the support companies are these guys on the side. Actually, let's use the infantry division for this example. So you need to consider that only a couple of your support companies will actually attack support artillery. For example, soft, support, soft attack plus 14. So with the plus 50, that's a plus 7. That brings your soft attack up to 21. If you have a line battalion of artillery, that's going to do 30. So the amount of actual bonus that having these support units gives isn't great. Uh, you can try and really beef this up with support artillery, rocket artillery, anti-air, and anti-tank, and that is what you will have to do. Bearing in mind, you will then not be uh, fielding engineers, um, recon, manpower, uh, field hospitals, or support companies, or maintenance companies, logistics companies, etc. There will definitely be sacrifices to be made for this, and I'm really not convinced about just how useful a bonus this is. The other line is far, far stronger. So while the numbers might look really good, in reality, they really are not. Unless you really are doubling down on like your uh, rocket artillery support, your artillery support, your AA support, and possibly AT support as well. Uh, disperse support, however, is very, very strong. It increases your recovery rate for line artillery, which it's all right. It's not as important as mobile warfare getting back into the fight very, very quickly, but it will certainly help some of your units which you haven't uh, withdrawing uh, recover themselves and then get back into the fight. Yeah, fine. But then again, you also have to consider that line artillery does not have a great organization to begin with. So the fact that they recover that much quicker to a very low limit anyway, yeah, limited. But this one does rock. This gives you a further 10% soft attack for all line artillery. Line artillery, the guys actually in your front line. They are not the support companies. So with this 10%, your artillery can actually reach a whopping and this is the thing I didn't realize, 45% additional soft attack. So remember we were kind of saying, oh wow, these get 50%. Artillery with dispersed support can get a 45% bonus. That is phenomenal. That is actually a huge amount. So you probably do want to be having two units, if not four units of artillery, maybe even more if you're completely crazy, uh, in your infantry divisions. And you might even want to play with numerous different division uh, templates. So you have so much are there to hold the line, and then so much are there to do damage. So you might have one division template, which is 20 combat width of just infantry, or uh, infantry and heavy tanks if you have the uh, factory capacity for it. And then you might have a second division, which you use in parallel with that first one, which is loads and loads of artillery and a couple of infantry just to hold the line. And then you use them in combination with each other. That could entirely work. That's legit. Uh, then we go down here to the mechanized offensive, which is when tanks start to come in. But these guys have the joint lowest tank breakthrough. These guys are terrible at breaking through. These are the opposite, more than Grand Battle Plan, of mobile warfare. They are very stationary. They do not do well with mobile unless you're doing hit and run. They are better holding the line, shooting at the enemy and then just eroding them over time but be aware that you are likely to lose territory as you are doing this although you will be doing a lot of damage and you will be really really hurting their industry so eventually you will knock down their strength sufficient that you can push back but there is definitely going to be that give and take then you have a choice between airland battle and shock and awe now first of all i want to talk about this ability down here this is the airland battle it gives you an air superiority plus 20 percent this is the only air non-land ability in this entire uh, page no other doctrine gives you any other bonuses except for land units except for this one and this is interesting because air superiority is basically a blanket uh, penalty to your opponents it's not actually a bonus um, to their uh, strength so this relies on two things one you actually having air superiority so if you are winning the air battle then yes this could be quite a potent one the second one is this is only a plus 20 percent and you might actually want to want to invest that artillery in fight in um blah, 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 in actual artillery stuff and also this is air superiority which is fighters this is not close air support or tactical bombers so you definitely want to have a lot of fighters rather than the actual combat support planes if you're using this 
otherwise, down this line, you have got the army hard attack plus 10%. You have tanks soft attack and hard attack. So again, your tanks are slightly better with this one. And then you have the reinforce rate. Every single tree has a 2% reinforce rate. I had to go through and double check that. They come in different times, like the uh, mobile warfare is relatively late with its plus two. No, it's actually earlier. Oh gosh, where is it? No, they all have it. Oh, maybe it was back here. Oh, there it is. So the Mobile Warfare actually get their reinforce rate uh, really quite early. Not as early as these guys where they get it from the outset and certainly not as late as Grand Battle Plan where it's literally the last thing you get. Reinforce rate is important because it's the rate that your strength recovers and combat strength is kind of a, a blanket baseline modifier for just how effective your forces are. If you're taking a lot of strength damage, which is what these guys do, then you will lose. If you have low strength, you're, you're just out. Even more so than if you have low organization. So that is something to consider. It's not like a deal breaker, but it's it's definitely important. So if you're expecting to get in a lot of fights really early on, you might well actually consider uh, uh, taking Mass Assault just for that early hold the line, oh my gosh, we're going to die kind of thing. But if you're a little confident about being able to hold and um, planning a bit more of a late game offensive, then you probably want to consider more about uh, Grand Battle Plan. But we'll talk about that. Okay, so we've gone to those, and then we'll have a look at Shock and Order. Now, this is really where everything that you've been setting yourself up for earlier on come to pass. So, first of all, your entire army, every single unit in your army, land army, gets a plus five soft attack. Then you get recon company uh, reconnaissance and also the reinforce rate. Recon company reconnaissance is important because it means that you are more likely to offset your opponent's tactics than otherwise. So... Only two, na only two doctrines have that recon company reconnaissance bonus, and that's these guys and Grand Battle Plan. Then you've got the artillery, sorry, infantry, motorized, mechanized, recovery rate, organization, tanks, organization, tanks, recovery rate. Uh, this just makes all of your units slightly stronger. And then finally, the lovely capstone. Your entire army has another 10% soft attack and another 10% hard attack, meaning that superior firepower can at end get a 45% artillery bonus firepower 35 percent for everything else and a 20 percent hard attack and that's for everything so if you're using tank destroyers to kill enemy armor you're going to be cutting through those guys like butter well more so than you would usually with tank destroyers so if you really want to do equipment damage and manpower damage then superior firepower is definitely the way to go just be aware that your units will be more fragile than the other three choices all right, then let's talk about the one that's totally my, not my total favorite, <laughs> which is Grand Battle Plan. This is probably the most flexible and also the most inflexible of the different doctrines. There's a lot of things that this one does good, and there's a couple of uh, very definite shortcomings which you will need to consider. I know a lot of people consider this to be the weakest one. I disagree with them. I think they're just not using battle plans correctly. So the thing to know about battle plan, and once again, they have very cleverly put it in the title. This is all about planning. You need to have planning preparation for this one to work properly. If you are constantly being pushed back, if you are constantly... I mean, to react to new attacks, and this is probably not the right one for you. You might want mobile warfare, or you might want mass assault to try and resist that a little bit harder. This is also quite a defensive one, but ultimately can probably be the strongest offensive. Uh, much like mobile warfare, this is more about territory control than superior firepower, which is about economic control. Um, but it does it in a different way. Um, mobile warfare is good on open flats. Grand battle plan is good in rougher terrain, terrain that's harder to get through, and also punching through choke points. Mobile warfare has a really tough time with choke points, and they'll probably need to think about naval invasions or aerodrops to get around those points. While grand battle plan, you can just wait, 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 and then push over, and there's nothing they can do about it because your ultimate attack is redonkulous. So, in the opener, you get match entre max entrenchment and entrenchment speed. This is kind of a misnomer. Um, you would think that they are very defensive, but like we talked about, these guys actually have the most defense. But if you have the time to sit down and entrench, then Grand Battle Plan is pretty strong for that, and it will help you resist the breakthrough of Mobile Warfare. Um, but it probably won't fare quite so well against Mass Assault or Superior Firepower, simply because these guys will just damage you, and these guys will just keep throwing stuff at you until you die. 
The next one is max planning, and this is where things get interesting. You will remember how I said with the mobile warfare that the maximum attack bonus you can get is 50%, and these guys can reach that 50% bonus pretty darn quickly. Well, for these guys, that 50% is nothing. I mean, with the second one, that maximum bonus, and this is a bonus to any attack that you do, is now 80%. Yes, it will take you a little more time to reach that, uh, that peak because you still gain planning preparation at the same speed. Um, it's like points per day rather than a percentage of that per day. Um, so you will need to be patient with Grand Battle Plan, but ultimately your attacks will be far stronger for it. Next up, you've got Defense, and this is their main defense. Well, with that one and that one give you your defense. So they do have some defensive ability, uh, not the 20% that these guys do, but they are uh, semi-unique in that. So these get 20% defense, these guys get 10, and both of these get zero. So they are a little more defensive. Both of these are a little bit more, well, eh, all three of them are kind of defensive. This one definitely isn't. No defense here. Um, Next up, we have got Grand Assault, which is the army, entire army breakthrough and entire army soft attack. So this one allows you to do a little bit more economic damage and also allows you to punch through. One of the interesting things to note with this, depending on which tree you, you take here, and uh, unlike these two, there's only one T-Choice, much like here, uh, your infantry can be surprisingly strong at breakthroughs. All of the other, na all of the other, I did it again, it's not nations, all of the other doctrines with the exception of mass assault, their infantry are not very good at breakthroughs, you'll be relying entirely on tanks to do that, but with the grand battle plan plus planning preparation means that your infantry is a very real tool to punch through enemy, well, to, to push back enemy lines, there's no real punching through, you, you move relatively slowly with this, but you can certainly push their lines back, break up their defences, uh, reduce their organisation and keep them on the run, with Grand Battle Plan. So let's talk a little bit about Assault versus Infiltration. So Assault is the way that you want to go if you really want this steamroller attack. And I'm trying as hard as I can to emphasize patience and steamroller. You will need to hold your line. You'll, pretty, you'll be pretty decent at it, probably not as good as superior firepower, but you should be able to hold that line pretty effectively. And wait, and wait, and wait, and your opponent's probably thinking, oh, this has become a stalemate, and then suddenly you attack, and you've got those little green lights all along your line because of your massive amount of planning preparation. That is only compounded by the fact that you get another 20% here, so you are now up to 50 plus 30 plus 20. You are now at 100% planning preparation versus their 50. Then your uh, mechanized and motorized are slightly stronger. Cool. And then your infantry motorized and mechanized get slightly more organization, your tank slightly more organization. Cool. Oh, and another 10% breakthrough. So not only is your planning preparation starting to surge and hit really, really hard, but so is your army breakthrough. Oh, and wait, this is a 20% army breakthrough. Sorry, 10% plus that 10%. This is for your entire army. Your entire army has a 20% breakthrough bonus. So your infantry are as effective as your tanks are at this point. And then you get this one. Oh, what's this? Another 10% max planning. That's now 110% attack bonus wherever you are attacking. And also the planning speed is now starting to ratchet up. Though again, patience. It will take a while to reach that. And then finally, we have got this one, which is some more organization for your infantry, motorized, mechanized tanks, and then the reinforce rate, as I said, right there at the capstone. Assault is probably the most straightforward, so if you're fairly new to the game, I would probably suggest that you play Grand Battle Plan and go down the assault line. It's hard to go wrong with this one. You just need to be a bit patient. If you're not very confident about microing everything, then this is the way to go. If you want to play your hand and be a bit more advanced, then sure, go for mobile um, warfare doctrine. Or for fire support, uh, sorry, superior firepower, uh, this is kind of all good all around. But if I, I would say for beginners, this is probably the one that you want to go with. Infiltration is a little bit more advanced, and the bonuses given are not as straightforward. So first of all, we start with the leg infantry breakthrough. So this gives your infantry the 20% breakthrough rather than the assault where everything gets the 20%. Uh, and also some more organization. Next up, you get tank recovery rate and tank organization. So your armored units will be slightly better. And this is the path you want to go if you want the most armored units. Although, honestly, your tanks are going to have phenomenal breakthrough anyway. You may as well compound that with the planning preparation. So a little bit of patience, some really big tanks with good breakthroughs, so that's either heavy tanks or medium tanks. Actually, it could even be light tanks. Light tanks are pretty good at breakthroughs, but you don't really have the speed that mobile warfare. Mobile warfare are very effective with light tanks because they are so quick and they have the organization to pull it off. You don't really have those bonuses with grand battle plans. So you want a more slow moving heavy tanks, probably medium tanks as well, uh, not in the same division, otherwise that'll slow everyone down, um, to do that.
Okay, so the next bonus is then supply consumption. So this is good if you're fighting in lo areas of low supply. Like I said, Grand Battle Plan is pretty good in rougher terrain. So if you're fighting in Africa, if you're fighting in the Russian forests or the Russian steppe, if you're fighting in a land war in Asia for some particular reason, then infiltration might well be the option you want to go for rather than waiting uh, stalemates out. So if you're in a stalemate, so if you're not, infiltration. Next one. Now, this is one of the most interesting. Land night attack plus 25%. When you are in attacking at night, you suffer a huge bonus. It's like 90%. Don't quote me on that. I'm not actually sure what it is. This gives you a bonus at night, which is compounded with the night vision goggles and the other night vision thing, which almost makes it fighting at night almost as effective as during the day. This is surprisingly effective when you consider just how long night is. It's basically one third of the day. So you are gaining efficiency in that one third of time when other people aren't. It's, it's, it's a little more difficult to really comprehend because it's not a straight up number. It's like, you are this much more effective. But you will be generally more effective because you have this night assault tactic. Okay, this is giving you more organization for infantry and tanks. And I think this line has more overall organization and stuff. In fact, I'm fairly sure it does. Oh no, maybe not. No, it doesn't. Okay, ignore that bit. But this does give you more organization for your tanks, infantry, motorized, mechanized. And then finally, just like the superior firepower, uh, that one, which one was it? That one. This gives you recon, company reconnaissance, and then finally the reinforce rate. So like I said, this one's a little more uh, subversive, so a little more advanced in what it does. This one's rather more straightforward. And this is really assault is where Grand Battle Plan really shines because that's what brings out the massive amounts of planning preparation. Get those plans down, let your troops build up that planning preparation, and then attack. One thing I should comment, actually, on Grand Battle Plan is you only get planning preparation when you are not fighting. So if someone is constantly pushing your lines, then you might struggle a little bit with Grand Battle Plan versus some of the others. So if you're up against a superior firepower, you might well want to use Grand... Um, you might well want to have some reserve units, which you are using a couple of tricks. Okay, here's one of my little tricks, just for you guys. When you are preparing for a war, you want to have your plans always out. So you, you have your lines, you have your plans made, and your planning preparation is rolling up. If you're already in a fight and you want to get some planning preparation, split off a portion of your army and have them facing a neutral country. And that is important because a neutral country is not firing back at you. This means that you can still get that planning preparation even while you're at war with someone else. So if someone is constantly pushing, you have a very busy front line, split away a couple of your troops, put them in a new army, face them up against Switzerland or someone like that, get that planning preparation up, re re reintegrate them into your main front line and then you've got these super attacky people who can hopefully push the enemy line back because once their line is starting to roll back it's fairly easy to keep it going because their organization will be very low and you're not letting it recover the other cool thing about grand battle plan is because their planning preparation is so high they can push and they can push and they can push and they can push all the others will have to take a break um, reassess their situation get their planning again and then push again because your threshold just your starting base value if you've been trained it if you've you've, you've uh, leveled it up enough it's just going to be so phenomenally high that once you push you basically won't stop until the war is over it's pretty phenomenal just just watching the steamroller go Okay, and finally, we have got the Mass Assault Doctrine. This is probably the most straightforward, although there are a couple of things which are very interesting about this one. So obviously, Mass Assault is all about having high numbers. If you are in a country with does not have a particularly high manpower and you're not going to be in a fight particularly early on, you probably do better with one of the other three. But if you're playing as China or Russia or Communist China or even some African nations which have very high manpower then mass assault could definitely be of interest. So early on, you start out with reinforce rate. You are definitely the earliest in getting reinforce rate. And also this minimum training level. So like I said, if you are on the back foot and you just need to put boots on the ground, this is great for that. Uh, boots on the ground basically is just more people that the enemy has to chew through in order to make gains. Yes, you might take heavy losses. Yes, you might not have all the equipment in place yet. But bodies are there. Bodies are there blocking people. You, you have a wall of flesh, basically. So Mass Effect is very good for early attacks if you're um, threatened by that. 
To compound that even further, you have a supply grace and out of supply. So if you're expecting to be fighting very large battles over massive amounts of space and you're worried about cutoffs against uh, certain mobile warfare people, then this is very good because this will allow your cutoffs to last longer and hopefully re-establish contact. It gives you another full two days because usually I think you have two days of supply. This increases that up to four days of supply. Uh, furthermore, the out of supply penalties that you suffer are reduced by 10%. So even if you are cut off for more than four days, you are still more effective and that's even more so if you're compounded with the commando general trait so isolated units can still fight pretty long time and this is also interestingly and i've only just considered this and i can't believe i only just thought of it gonna work with paratroopers and marines as well so if you're using paratroopers of quite a lot pocket defense could work very very well with that because your paras will have longer to re-establish contact with friendly forces hopefully punching through a panicked enemy all right, next up you have leg infantry organization and max entrenchment. It is not quite as big a max entrenchment as grand battle plan gets, but this is again kind of feeding into the more defensive mentality of mass assault. Don't worry, the assault part of this will come through a little bit later. This is where the, um, the choice comes in, the branch. So we'll start off with the shorter one, and this is kind of bizarre because it's the only one which is too shorter. I don't really know why that is. I don't think it's particularly strong, um, and I'm, I, I don't really understand why it's shorter. It just is. It does generally feel like the weaker choice going with this one, and there are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, this is the line that you take if you are needing more manpower. If you are playing with mass assault, you probably already have tons of manpower, which makes mass mobilization that much less interesting. Um, so this one gives you just straight up human wave offensive plus 5% recruitable population. Rather than splitting it over two choices here, you just get it in the one. Otherwise, you get uh, division attrition and effect on our partisan, oh, sorry, effect of our partisan. So if you have occupied territory, I guess this is if you're on a last ditch defense, much like the desperate defense here, then this could be good, but uh, no, I'm not convinced. <laughs> um, so you have those. Then you have infantry recovery rate. Infantry recovery rate of 0.3 is very, very quick. So you can have a constant cycling in and out of units, much like the mobile warfare doctrine would do with their tanks pushing in and out but you can do that with your infantry lines uh, infantry motorized mechanized get more organization your tanks get more organization that just makes them small sturdy and then this is where things get interesting infantry combat width minus 0.4 this line also gets it uh, in the same place so the vast offensives you get that, uh, infantry combat width 0.4 that that's a bit of a weird number until you actually consider the way that combat width works in this game so if you have got and this is where it gets interesting. An army. You usually are based on an army of 40 combat width. This is kind of the, the, the extreme. This is the maximum you should really ever go to. And this is about as weighty as most armies you will come across. The combat width of 40. This is just 20 units of infantry. When you start adding in artillery, artillery have a weight of 3 rather than 2. It becomes less numbers of infantry. But... Something interesting happens when you have that 0.4 bonus. It is basically means that you can get this entire line. Once you have 25 units of infantry, this combat width stays a miraculous 40. Meaning that you can have two of these absolutely enormous units supporting each other in a battle. Because most battles will... Uh, one province versus one province will be a combat width of 80, meaning that two of these 40 combat widths will be fighting at once. That's why you have it in 20s and 40s, so you can have that reinforcement. So you can have basically five units of infantry for free, well not for free, but you know what I mean, in a battle. This means that your infantry blocks will have a ridiculous amount of hit points, they will have a ridiculous amount of organization, and they will have a ridiculous amount of defense. They basically just become solid blocks of concrete which will never move. Even to uh, Grand Battle Plan will struggle to push you back, although they are probably the most likely to. If you're up against... Um, Mobile Warfare, you can basically laugh at them as your defense just completely stymies their breakthrough, as impressive as it might be, just because they don't have the organization to keep that offensive going. Uh, superior Firepower is probably going to be a 
bigger threat simply because they will be reducing the equipment that you have as well as the manpower. The manpower you can probably laugh off just because you are more likely to be one of these big nations as we talked about a moment, a moment ago. But equipment and industry is going to be more of a problem, especially if you're playing in China. So if you're playing as Japan and you're expecting the China player to do this, you might well want to consider superior firepower just to break what remains of their economy after you've stolen that east coast which you totally should do because that's where all the factories are um it's going to be fairly expensive in terms of equipment but it's only really infantry equipment maybe support equipment if you have some of the other support stuff going on maybe a couple of artillery if you have support artillery but generally it's just going to be really really infantry equipment heavy which isn't a huge problem because it's relatively easy to get massive amounts of infantry equipment going out. It's, it's, it's the cheapest product, basically. But this does mean that you can fight with these monster stacks of infantry, and they can be really effective. They'll be slow moving, but you won't stop them. It'll be like, yeah, it'll, it'll be hardcore. All right, so that is where the mass assault doctrine really gets interesting because they are the only ones that can do this, with the exception of... Uh, a field marshal with offensive? No, which one is it? So either offensive or defensive, which also has the combat width reduction, but it's nowhere near as big as this. And then if you have a field marshal with that trait plus this, then you can mix things up a bit with some artillery in there as well to increase your capabilities even further. Because you probably don't need such a ridiculous amount of hit point organization or defense. Adding in a bit more soft attack is going to be pretty potent. Someone who's better at maths can work out precisely what the, the optimal makeup for that. If you know what it is, let me know in the comments. All right, so then the final one here is army recovery rate. So actually your infantry units will be recovering at a 0.5 uh, bonus, meaning that they can get back into the fight really, really quickly. Also, your outer supply penalty, minus 30, um, is going to be even better, and the effect of your partisans means that you're going to be really hurting anyone who's occupying yourself. So this is... This is the, <laughs> hate to say it, but this is the choice of uh, people who are losing at the time. If, however, you are not in a losing position or you are at least putting up a decent fight, then I would strongly urge you go with deep battle. You start out with a supply consumption reduction. This is good for poor amounts of infrastructure, as these large countries often have, and the large stacks of people that you are trying to throw at your opponent. They are very supply intensive because you are big blocks of blokes bludgeoning people damn it ran out of alliterations okay then you have got deep operations which increases tanks slightly uh, it's interesting that the tank strength or tank organization of the mass assault are as high as superior firepower they both have a plus five organization mobile warfare is 12 and then uh, grand battle plans only three so grand battle plan tanks not actually that strong um then after that you have max planning so this is the only other max planning bonus uh, which a Doctrine gets, and it is Mass Assault, so your plans will be 60% rather than 50%. And then we have the Combat Width, which we've already spoken about, and another Supply Consumption Reduction, which is good because uh, you will really be stressing your infrastructure out if you are using those massive blocks. This is where tanks start to become more useful, and this is where you start to become an offensive power, because your tanks get breakthrough and organization, your infantry get breakthrough and organization, um, and you can start actually attacking with those infantry units. Like I said, Grand Battle Plan is the only other nation whose infantry are good on the offense. So now these guys are too. And then finally, you have mechanized and motorized bonus, recovery rate for tanks and organization for tanks. Uh, so your tanks are now more effective. Again, this last part is all, sorry, this last part is all about the offensive. Capped off by the organization loss while moving of minus 25%. Now you will remember that I said that you don't recover as much by a long way organization when you're attacking so if you're constantly attacking and constantly pushing forwards you're going to have to stop your armored units you're going to have to let them rest and very often when you're trying to get them to rest that's when your enemy counterattacks you and pushes you right back out again mass assault don't really have that problem as much because this organization loss while moving is pretty significant this will more or less allow your tanks to continue to move without any pausing so long as they don't meet any major resistance so this is really when mass assault becomes offensive all of this stuff is defensive all right well i think that's all i wanted to say on the four different doctrines i'm going to give a very very quick uh, synopsis of each one and then some interesting stats over them all but basically that is the overview done so mobile warfare this is very good if you want a more micro intensive game this is all about tanks 
punching their way through the opponent and taking, um, sorry, creating cutoffs and then exploiting those cutoffs by crushing your opponents. It is also the one with the most elite forces. Your units have by far the highest amount of organization, which is going to be important because you don't have much defensive capability. In fact, you have almost no defensive capability. You need to be on the offensive most of the time. If you let a battle uh, become a stalemate or if you come up against a choke point, you will struggle a little bit more. Next up, we have superior firepower, which is more of an economic doctrine. So if you want to wreck the economies of your opponent, then superior firepower is probably the way to go because you will be doing a ton of equipment damage as well as manpower damage. This isn't so much about taking territory as mobile warfare and grand battle plan are, but this is about wrecking the um, wrecking the day of your opponent basically uh, it is also the only one that has the air addition but that's probably the weaker choice uh, than shock and awe but if you do happen to have a really really good air superiority bonuses anyway then you might want to consider taking it i would uh, suggest avoiding integrated support unless you are going to be using probably more than three combat support units and honestly in my opinion the support support units you know it's it's in the name support are the stronger so your field hospitals your logistics companies your recon companies your engineer companies those are generally a stronger choice because why don't you just use the field versions which will then get these bonuses i don't know uh interesting question actually i wonder if this line artillery are affect aa and anti-tank i doubt it I think this is just going to be artillery. I also don't know, and this is something, uh, if you happen to know, let me know in the comments, because I generally don't know the answer to this. Do any of these bonuses affect rocket artillery? Because rocket artillery already have a higher soft attack than regular artillery, so you could really do some soft attack damage with rocket artillery and superior firepower if they are affected by these bonuses. I legitimately don't know the answer to that. It is not something I have tried. Okay, then we have got Grand Battle Plan over here, which is probably the most all-round one. It's also the Stalemate Breaker. If you are fighting in a long battle like World War One with trenches type thing. Grand Battle Plan is the way out of it. You will need to be patient. You will need to make extensive use of plans and um, preparation bonuses. But when you do, your attacks will just roll forwards like a steamroller. But it does take some patience and it kind of relies on an enemy not attacking you too much. So you need to be attacking from a position of strength with this one you can use some of the more tricksy abilities but they are rather more advanced and just on paper don't seem quite as strong as the assault side and then finally we have the mass assault over here which honestly is all about this selection right here which allows your infantry combat width to get that much bigger um, allowing you to field that many more troops in a small area um, your infantry blocks basically become immovable blocks of awesome uh, that you can let your enemy just crash themselves into. They're going to be almost impossible to break. You just need to be careful about enemy soft attack damage because, uh, particularly from these guys, uh, because your industry is most likely going to be your weak point and the amount of guns you can actually give to the vast hordes that you are trying to field. Later on, they do become rather better at pushing back, but you need to have your economy to actually survive that far. So remember move your factories to the urals okay so that is the synopsis i wanted to give for the four doctrines in terms of just some very very quick stats in terms of tank breakthrough ability mobile warfare definitely wins out with 60 percent potential bonus grand battle plan has 20 uh, superior fire tower and mass effect 10 the highest organizations by far is mobile warfare with a 60 for motorized mechanized so you want to make use of those and then infantry and tanks uh, they have definitely got the highest tanks uh, their infantry are higher but the difference isn't quite so great superior firepower actually have the most organization for infantry units uh, although grand battle plan comes close second with 20 uh, to their 25 tanks organization is five points for both these guys and also mass assault and motorized mechanized the second best option for those are going to be grand battle plan with 25 versus their 60 and then both of these guys get just 10 so their motorized and mechanized are nowhere near as effective um, soft attack obviously superior firepower are a head and shoulders above everyone else with their artillery managing to get up to a 45 percent bonus and the rest of their army like the entire land army getting a 35 percent bonus the only other 
uh, doctrine to actually get a bonus at all is Grand Battle Plan with a 5%. So the amount of economic damage you can wreck with the superior firepower is really quite impressive. In terms of hard attack, the only one to get hard attack bonuses, and this is for their entire army, if you take the air land battle section, is for... Wait, is that true? Pretty sure that was true. No, it wasn't true. Air land battle is actually for the tanks only. Shock and awe gives it for the entire army um, is this uh, superior firepower. No one else gets any hard attack, so if you're coming up against motorized, sorry, mechanized forces or tank forces, then superior firepower will give you an edge there. Although, honestly, just field anti-tank or tank destroyers, Overall, it's probably going to be the more effective. Although, if you're really struggling against heavy tanks, then this is just going to give you that little bit more of a of a punch. In terms of planning speed, obviously, mobile warfare come way ahead of everyone else with a 70% bonus, meaning that they'll get that 50% planning preparation that much quicker than anyone else, uh, meaning that they can really fight that start, stop, start, stop, start, stop type battle. Uh, Grand battle plan are the only one with a bonus getting 10%, although. Considering the amount of planning preparation they are likely to need to get, it's not going to seem like that big a bonus. Um, mobile Warfare and Mass Assault are the only doctrines that give you a manpower bonus, although those are kind of the losing trees, so only take those if you really are struggling, because the other line is just so much stronger for everything else that that doctrine uh, happens to be um, strong for. Infantry Breakthrough, uh, the only, well, Infantry Breakthrough, you can only really do it to Grand Battle Plan and Mass Assault. In fact, with your massive groups of infantry, with the 10% uh, Infantry Breakthrough, you're probably going to be quite effective. But that 20% Infantry Breakthrough, plus the 110% Planning Preparation bonus, plus any air superiority, naval bombardment, um, you can really break the stalemates with Grand Battle Plan doing that. Grand Battle Plan and uh, Superior Firepower are the only ones that get recon bonuses. Air support is only available for superior firepower organization loss while moving uh, you have the least penalty going with mass assault although the mobile warfare does also get one it's 25% for these guys 10% for them um, recovery rate for mechanized and motorized you get a 0.4 recovery rate for mobile warfare which is way ahead of the others you get a 10% for tanks with grand battle plan and a 10% for both mechanized motorized and tanks for mass assault but generally these guys again that that all factors into their start stop start stop type push but this also allows them to use a cycling reinforcement like i said it's very micro intensive so if you've got units which are losing you've got some more units waiting in reserve pull out the units that are losing just don't pull them all out otherwise you lose the combat um especially if you've got signal companies. I mean, this is more advanced tactics here. But if you have signals companies, which means that you reinforce more quickly, so you get back into that reinforcement slot, and that's also where the reinforce rate comes in, I think, um, then you'll be able to pull this off faster. You'll be able to pull those small uh, units, remember, 20 combat width, maybe 40, but probably 20, uh, recover their organization super quick, throw them back in the fight, and then just use this kind of cycling in and out uh, system very effective with mobile warfare but again mobile uh, micro intensive and then finally everyone gets the same amount of reinforce rate uh, that was just a stat I was curious about okay I think that's everything I wanted to say about the doctrines I really do hope that this has been useful for you I know that doctrines have come up a couple of times particularly like discussing which are the best in which situations and for which countries I think that most countries can probably make use of one or two depending on what their uh, particular goals in that battle are so if you're playing a Russia which is planning to be a little more hands-off and you're not expecting to uh, Germany to be particularly aggressive then you probably can get away with a grand battle plan oh, in fact Russia could do with all four of these Germany probably doesn't have the manpower to sustain a mass assault but could really be quite effective with all three of these britain and france uh could do with all three kind of similar to germany china you're probably going to be locked into mass assault so you might be able to use grand battle plan to push japan back eventually but honestly you might as well use the, your manpower uh japan probably would be the most effective with superior firepower grand battle plan simply because of how big china is and that will be your main threat the usa uh, honestly could use all four it does have a lot of manpower something which is often not particularly well utilized um, so the options are there it really depends what kind of game you want to play and what bonuses you have and then if you're throwing things like Kaiserreich into the mix which has design companies that can change that even more so you will have seen me playing some very very mechanized games for example the Republic of France using mobile warfare even though they might be more usually aligned towards Grand Battle Plan simply by how powerful 
their tank companies are, uh, meaning that mobile warfare just becomes a better choice. Also, uh, particularly in mods, not so much in vanilla, some focus trees will kind of push you in one direction or another uh, by having focuses which specifically give you research bonuses for a particular grand battle plan. Uh, sorry, <laughs> for a particular doctrine. For instance, I know that Canada tends to push you towards grand battle plan or superior firepower. I don't think it has anything for mobile warfare or mass assault. Some of them, like Russia, have something for all four. Some of them will have it for all three. I think Germany is for mobile, superior, or battle plan, but not mass assault. Anyway, like I said, I really do hope that this has been useful. If you have any comments on what I have brought up here, if I've got anything wrong, or if you think that I'm a moron for saying something about this, then let me know in the comments. I'm very eager to see what you have uh, to say about that, especially in terms of, like I said, the whether the superior firepower bonuses factor in for rocket artillery, because that's a unit I don't often use simply because it's kind of further down the tech tree and I've already got my industry set up by that point in the way that I like it but I'm I'm interested to know about that let me know if you've had any particular successes or failures with any of the doctrines if you particularly hate them in any particular or if you particularly hate any one of these or particularly like any one of these let me know why it'd be great to hear that and if you've liked this video anyway just hit that like button if you want to support this type of tutorial coming out in the future then this really does rely on your generosity that is what keeps me going in this job youtube has not been paying me particularly well thanks to all the demonetization issues i've been having lately so i really do rely on your generosity and patreon and on twitch uh, subscriptions as well you can find me on twitch uh twitch.com slash more twitch.tv slash mordred viking uh, patreon link is in the description below though that's patreon.com slash mordred viking and discord link you can find down below if you want to talk to me about this directly or comment comment about too i read them all uh thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you next time goodbye